in this lecture I am going to discuss about uh, representations. This representation is especially relations to Fodor's concept of mind, the how Fodor is explaining the concept of mind in different way. I have already explained about representations in the different models of cognitive mind lectures. In this lectures I am going to cover further concept of representational theory of mind and uh, secondly is hypothesis of language of thought and semantic engines. Thirdly, a computational theory of mind. Fourthly, a propositional attitudes uh, and uh, fifthly CRTM or computational representational theory of mind and uh, sixthly intentional realism. First of all, we will start with representations and representations are about uh, as we know uh, the things other than uh, themselves and are intentional uh, in the sense of being about this or that because the mental representations have uh, content which is related to thought, belief, intentional actions and all they are also intentional and uh, in the sense of being uh, purposive because it stands for something else. Now, we may ask a question, oh, what is it that distinguish items that serve as representations from other objects uh, or events? Secondly, and what distinguishes the various kinds of symbols from one uh, another? As for the first question uh, is concerned, there has been general uh, agreement that the basic a notion of a representations uh, involve things like standing for or being about referring to and on denoting and something else. Some theorists have maintained that it is only the use of symbols that exhibit or indicate the process of mind and mental states. Here we would like to see that the mental representations uh, like uh, belief and thoughts constitute the broad domain of cognitive science. They explain how cognition takes place in the human mind. Cognitive science includes linguistic and cognitive psychology and this cognitive science has brought about a cognitive revolution in the study of mind. And uh, here we can undertake uh, two important developments in cognitive science. One is the representational theory of mind. For this to accept the representational theory of mind is to accept that mental representations are very much like inter-representational state of a digital computer. The other is the adoption of a computational model of mind or computational theory of mind. In turn, two questions have to be answered in this connection. Uh, what kinds of representational rep systems are employed in uh, cognitions and, uh, and what is machine intelligence or artificially intelligent? Fodor has answered these uh, questions in his computational representational theory of uh, mind, in short CRTM. But if we see uh, the computational representation theory of mind makes a strong assumptions about mental processes that is uh, mental processes are uh, computational processes. Uh, therefore, uh, those mental processes are uh, defined uh, over symbols on computational process uh, for view uh, is on computational process are symbolic and uh, formal. They are symbolic because they are defined over representations and they are formal because they are applied to representations in virtue of uh, the syntax of representations. The theory purports to offer a solution to the problem raised by the uh, compositionality of propositional attitudes like beliefs, thoughts, etc. Secondly, it proposes the vindicate of the strong ring of the intentional realist uh, causal thesis regarding the mental uh, phenomena. Again, 
it may be noted that the CRTM or computational representational uh, theory of mind is consequently based on two fundamental assumptions. The uh, first one is a Porter's language of thought hypothesis or LOT or the second is the view that psychological explanations that is both intentional and nomological. First, we have to see the representational theory of mind shows that any propositional attitudes uh, such as belief, desire, doubts, etc., is literally a computational relation between an organism and some formula in the internal code of that organism. Here, Fodor states that uh, to believe that such kind of things exist, to have a mental symbols uh, that means that such and such uh, token in your head in the certain ways and it is to have uh, such a token in your belief box uh, he said and uh, he said that even if whenever we are uh, believing or something some kind of mental activities uh, those activities are existing in our uh, belief uh, box it is uh, in virtue of this system for representing and processing informations that mental states are related causally to one another. Moreover, uh, according to Fodor, propositional attitudes as relations uh, between organisms and internal representations uh, precisely the view that uh, the psychologist have independently arrived at. By providing a relational treatment of the propositional attitude, it is possible to state how they are content uh, full. For the relational uh, treatment, uh, propositional uh, attitudes are dyadic relations and are the internal mental representations. The belief ascriptions uh, statements are true only if the organism stands in uh, believed relation to the representational uh, contents. Firstly, it is naturally believable that uh, propositional attitudes are relations. For example, when John believes in something, uh, it is seems that John stands in relation to something that is the object of the belief. Here, John's belief and the object of belief, which is like turn to one to another. And secondly, existential generalization applies to the verb propositional attitudes. For example, if John believes uh, it is uh, raining, then we can undoubtedly say that there is something that John believes which shows that the belief is a relation between John and something that he believes. Fodor is realistic about intentional and propositional attitudes. The main point of his theory of intentionality is that intentionality is primary and is originally a real feature in the brain. Language is intentional only in the secondary sense, not in the primary sense. And therefore, intentional is the primary and language is the secondary. And this language intentional only in so far as some of the uh, sentences which are uttered in our natural languages and describes the real feature of the mind of the oneself or others. It is the fact that which uh, helps us in generating our natural language and also special vocabulary in language that involves employment of verbs operating over a propositional uh, content. Uh, for example, if we said that John decided to stay at the bus stop rather than make a run to the local police stations, uh, because he believed that certain things had certain desires, came up with a certain evaluative decisions. Then, we are describing a series of real processes in John's brain, which involve 
compositional operations over propositional contents. Here John really has represented uh, to himself the possible behavior scenario that we should stay at the bust of and that we should run uh, from it to the local police stations. He has also represented to himself a wave of more general beliefs and desires which he has correlated up with these two behavioral scenario and which make these behavioral scenario relevant and plausible and sensible uh, solution to his uh, problems. That is, he has also evaluated this behavioral uh, scenario in such a way that he can be said truly and literally to decide on one of uh, them for good reasons. From the above example, we find that uh, John's uh, mind must be able to make use of some medium in terms of which uh, he can represent the behavioral scenarios that is belief, desire and, and etc. And John's brain uh, must have a language of thought wherever propositional contents of beliefs and decisions uh, take place. Content of beliefs and uh, decisions and, and the other propositional attitudes are first uh, represented uh, then operated on or processed in, in the individual ways which go to form the different propositional attitudes. Same propositional contents for example, that there will be rain could be the information content of two different attitudes. Uh, one can believe that there will be rain and hope that there will be rain or believing it, but not hope for it. According to Fodor, the theory of propositional attitudes is required to meet some conditions. There are basically two such conditions. First, theory of propositional attitudes must explain the parallelism between verbs of propositional attitudes and verbs of saying. Secondly, it must explain the opacity of propositional attitudes. By parallelism between verb of saying and verb of propositional attitudes, uh, it can be shown that John believes that it is raining and its corresponding in verb of saying. Namely, John says that it is raining exhibit isomorphism in syntax, semantics and logic are form of structure. The opacity of propositional attitudes is a, a complex phenomena understood in terms of the following three uh, characteristics. Uh, firstly, statements containing verbs of propositional attitudes are not truth function of their comp components. For example, from the truth uh, of the declarative sentence uh, uh, that is uh, to say that George Orwell uh, wrote animal farm, we cannot compute the truth of the statement uh, that uh, John believes that uh, George Orwell wrote animal farm. Secondly, uh, though the declarations warrant existential generalizations, a statement occurring as the object of uh, verbs of the proposition attitudes does not warrant such existential generalizations. For example, from the truth of the statement, George Orwell wrote animal farm. We can infer there is a John George Orwell who wrote animal farm, but from this we cannot infer uh, that there is a George Orwell, John believes that George Orwell wrote animal farm. Thirdly, the opposite of propositional attitudes is that in the case of propositional attitudes, uh, the principle of substitutions fails. Uh, the principle of substitutions says that given true statement of identity, one of its term uh, can be substituted 
uh, for the other in any true statement where one of the terms of, of the statement of course, and the resulting statement is true. This is all about uh, representational theory of mind and uh, Fodor has been arguing that uh, this representational theory of mind is represented in a uh, completely semantic can be realized even if in the syntax and that will be very clear if we see the second point that hypothesis of language of thought and uh, semantic engines. Here the semantic engines they have been arguing that uh, mind is a kind of uh, semantic engines. The representation theory of mind arises uh, with the recognition that thoughts have contents carried by a mental representations. Uh, the representational theory of mind arises with the recognition that uh, thoughts have contents uh, carried out by mental representations. Uh, for example, John's belief that snow is white here, John's uh, mental representations or thought has the mental content that is snow is uh, white. As we know that uh, there are different kinds of representations such as pictures, maps and many other picture forms which is referring to something even if a road signals whenever we are traveling somewhere else and uh, that signal stand for something whether curve is there, whether down is there, whether the road is up is there and this kind of signals are everywhere in the existing and those things are stand for something which are referring to uh, something. In this case, we are talking about only mental uh, representations. Sententialism uh, distinguishes itself as a version of representationalism by positing that mental representations are themselves linguistic uh, expressions within a, a language of thought. And moreover, if we on the other hand, if we see uh, some sententialists uh, point out that the language of thought is just the thinker's uh, spoken language, uh, which is internalized, and other uh, identify the language of thought with the mentalis. That is an unarticulated and internal uh, language in which the computation occur. Therefore, the internalized uh, language is which is unarticulated and mental is are unarticulated internalized language which is not uh, existing in the uh, written form which is existing in our uh, brain only according to Fodor. Particular belief may be true or false. Uh, beliefs are relations to mental representations and then belief must have seen relation to representations that have truth values among their semantic properties. And if sententialism says that mental representations have truth values, uh, we could really uh, account for the true valuation of mental representations. And here belief plays a central part in reasoning. As uh, we can say that reasoning is a process that attempts to secure new beliefs by exploiting beliefs and reasoning all these reasoning would preserves the truth belief uh, by being the manipulation of truth value sentential representations according to the rules. Therefore, the sententialist hypothesis is that reasoning consisting in a formal inferences, it is a processes turned primarily uh, to the structure of uh, mental uh, sentences. Then reasons are things very much like classical uh, programmed computer. Why it is like classical program computer? Because which is are existing in the formal in inferences, uh, which are mental sentences according to Fodor. And again Fodor also says that he has been arguing that this th thinking is one kind of mechanically it is a kind of thinking is a systematic and productive. How this thinking process is systematic 
and productive. Now, we have to see that. For example, Jones believes that uh, whether William is taller than Russell and uh, this implies that uh, John is capable of considering that Russell is shorter than William. More clearly, uh, the fact that John can have some thought and tells that he can have certain other semantically related thoughts. Now, the question is how is this semanticity possible? Because the semanticity is very difficult to explain in a systematic way. I believe that any kind of semantic system is there in the human brain is one kind of semanticity and semantic is there already in the human uh, brain. Whenever we are explaining something and we understand that and we produce the secondary activities. This uh, will be very clear if we see this example. Suppose that John thought that William is taller than Russell's uh, involves the registration of William's is taller than Russell and here uh, the first sentence is creating uh, the second sentence which is productive as well as a systematic also. Uh, this kind of sentences further says that uh, this mentalist sentences is itself a complex representations uh, containing uh, simpler representations. As complex uh, mental representations uh, says that mental sentences results from processes ultimately defined on mental words and expressions. Therefore, uh, if John can produce William is taller than Russell, he must access to William Russell and is taller than. And if he has these mental representations, uh, then he is capable of producing Russell is, is shorter than William. The sententialism uh, posits that mental representations are linguistically complex representations whose semantic properties are determined by the semantic properties of their constituents. And here, productivity and systematics run together. If we postulate mechanism adequate to account for the one, then we, we get the other automatically. And here, uh, as if the belief system is working in the automatic way, in the mechanical way. The question is that uh, what sort of mechanisms uh, are there or what sort of mechanisms are existing in this case. The sentences of a natural language have the combinatorial semantics. On this view, uh, learning language is learning a perfectly general procedure uh, for determining the meaning of its lexical elements. Linguistic capacities cannot help, but the systematic on this account, because it, it gives the very same combinatorial mechanism that determine the meaning of all the rest. Language express thought and thought is systematic as language is according to Jerry Fodor. Therefore, to have the thought that is William is taller than Russell is ipso facto to have access to the thought uh, that Russell is shorter than uh, William. Of course, anybody who is in a position to have one of these thought is ipso facto is a position to have the other. Uh, therefore, the language of thought explains the systematicity of thought which is an essential requirement of the structure of language of thought. If you see in the mind there are two boxes according to Jerry Fodor. One is belief box and uh, the second one is desire box. The language of thought hypothesis is a speculation on the form that stories take place. Our beliefs and desires are encoded as sentences. According to Fodor, our sentences uh, that we think are not the English sentences or any sentences in natural languages. It may be any language, 
इट मे बी आइदर ओरिया लैंग्वेज और मराठी लैंग्वेज और हिंदी लैंग्वेज और संस्कृत लैंग्वेज इट मे बी एनी अदर लैंग्वेजेस हुई चीज ऑकर इन योर सेंटेंस एनी काइंड ऑफ नेचुरल लैंग्वेजेस सेंटेंसेस एंड आवर थिंकिंग ऑकोर्स इन ए स्पेशल लैंग्वेजेस अकॉर्डिंग टू जेरी फोर्डर एंड दैट लैंग्वेज कॉल्ड एज मेन्टालीज एंड मेन्टालीज इज ऑर्गानाइज इन टू वर्ड्स एंड सेंटेन्सेस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम मेन्टालीज वर्ड्स आर कन्सेप्ट एंड मेन्टालीज सेन्टेन्सेस आर थट्स द सेन्टेन्सेस अफ मेन्टालीज आर स्टोर्ड इन ए न्यूराल मीडियम बिकज पार्टन अफ न्यूराल आक्टिविटीज कू डेवलप सेन्टेन्सीयल रिप्रेजेशन हिअर फोर्डर्स लांगुएज अफ थट फिट विथ द मल्टीपुल रेरायल्टी आर्गुमेंट्स बिकज अकोर्डिंग टू फोर्डर कोग्निशन हाज नथिंग डायरेक्ट टू डू विथ इट्स स्पेसीफिक न्यूरोलोजिकाल एम्बडिमेंट्स बट राधर कन्सर्नस प्रोसेस अपरेटिंग ऑन द कॉमन लैंग्वेज ऑफ थॉट देयर फॉर दिस लैंग्वेज ऑफ थॉट इज लाइक मल्टीपल रियलाइजेबिलिटी मॉडल इवन इफ इन द केस ऑफ मल्टीपल रियलाइजेबिलिटी मॉडल ऑफ कोग्निशन और माइंड एज यू हैव सीन दैट माइंड कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन डिफरेंट वेज एंड डिफरेंट सिस्टम कैन बी रियलाइज इन वन सिस्टम्स एंड इवन माइंड इज फंक्शनिंग इन द मल्टीपल वे द वे इवन इफ ए कंपिटिशनल सिस्टम इज फंक्शनिंग देयर फॉर दिस लैंग्वेज ऑफ थॉट हैज काइंड ऑफ दिस कॉमनलिटी विथ मल्टीपल रियलाइज मॉडल ऑफ माइंड बट अकॉर्डिंग टू फोर्डर ही से दैट कोग्निशन इज न्यूराल बट कोग्निशन इज कंपोर्शनल इन मेन्टालीज द वे इवन इफ मल्टीपल रियलिटी मॉडल इज दैट इवन इफ द न्यूराल इज देर इन द कंपोर्शनल प्रोसेस आर देर एंड वी कैन इमेजिन ए डिवाइस दैट कुड मेनुपुलेट सेन्टेन्सेस विदउट रिगार्ड्स टू देयर मिनिंग सच कैंड अफ डिवाइसेस अकोर्डिंग टू हगलैंड इज सेमांटिक इंजिन्स एंड and this device would perfectly mimic the performance of native speaker but would do without relying as a native speaker would do on the meaning of the same manipulated sentences and here hogland trying to argue that uh, mind is a kind of machines and even if machine is functioning syntactical way but semantic is there because this semanticity is there the way mind is फॉर दम ह्यूमन माइंड इज लाइक ए सेमांटिक मे इंजिन्स एंड दैट सेमांटिटी इज पसिबिलिटीज आर देयर अकोर्डिंग टू हगलैंड दोज सेन्टेन्सेस मे एक्सप्रेस इन द प्रपोजिशंस बट द डिवाइस केयर्स ओनली अबाउट देयर सेफ्स दैट इज सिंटैक्स इन दिस वे हगलैंड सेज दैट इफ यू टेक केयर ऑफ सिंटैक्स semantic will be ta- will take care of uh, itself now the question is is such a device possible according to hogland not only semantic engines possible but they are exist an ordinary computing machine is a semantic engine according to them we design and program computer so that they manipulate symbols in accordance with purely syntactical uh, rules the symbols are meaningful to us but the machines that deploy them can nothing about this they operate uninterpreted symbols and uh, but in a way the honor semantic constraints and the question is now how can syntax uh, they have been arguing that even if there is a close relationship between syntax and semantics now the question is how can syntax mirror the semantic according to uh, them the formal logic is the best example for this syntax semantic uh, relationship so for example if p then q p uh, therefore q uh, this rule tells us that if we have a particular configuration of symbols we are permitted to write new symbols 
here what is significant about the modus ponens rules is that it is formulated and deployed without regard to uh, semantics, but the rules make sense that, that is to say they confirm to the semantics of inference. Let us see the uh, concrete examples and uh, the concrete example is like this if it is raining then I shall need an umbrella then P stand for it is raining and Q stand for I shall need an umbrella P it is raining therefore, I shall need an umbrella. Thus, according to them from this concrete examples from this modus ponens uh, rules they said that formal logic mirrors this kind of semantic uh, knowledge in rules in rules and the application of which require no semantic knowledge. The question is what has uh, this to do with minds uh, with this uh, modus ponens uh, example to explain the human mind by supposing that minds manipulate mental representations we need a sentences in the language of thought and uh, and if mind manipulate sentences then this question would seem to require a sentences under standard some component of that mind inputs the symbols and another job of the mind is to understand sentences in the language of thought in the language of thought and against this background it is easier to apply the notion of semantic engines. As we have already mentioned that a semantic engine is a device that performs symbol operations in a way that reflects semantic relations holding among those symbols, but does so exclusively by syntactic principles. We get the semantic it is because of the uh, syntactic principles. In the same way, we can also suppose that mind contains mechanisms which understand the meanings of these representations and therefore, if the mind is a semantic engines, engine is realized by the brain. If the mental operations include the manipulate of symbols and that is sentences in the language of thought, then the embodiments of those symbols in the brain need a not resemble the symbols we can write with pen and paper. They might involve subtle electrical or chemical states. If there is a language of thought, its sentences are invisible from the point of view of observer examining the microstructure of a, a brain. Therefore, uh, it is very difficult to observe examining the representational theory of mind from the this uh, microstructure point because which is internal which is existing in the invisible way and it is very it is invisible to the observer knowing uh, about the mind and that which is actually existing in the microstructure of a brain. Uh, now, we have to see the computational theory of mind states that human mental processes are computational processes. The theory of a computation has uh, is very important. The basic background of this theory of computation uh, become more popular. Uh, if you see after the publications of Alan Turing's famous article on computing machinery and intelligence and Turing thesis uh, states that minds of intelligence provided to be a strong support of the computational theory of, of mind. A Turing uh, machine is said to be a program in abstract symbolism. Although we have seen in the different cognitive model of mind there I have briefly explained what is this computational theory of mind. Uh, we will be explaining very largely in relation to, to how this computational theory of mind plays important role in philosophy of uh, mind especially in the contemporary issues in philosophy of mind and uh, cognitions because which is the one of the most important and scientific explanation of the computational thesis of mind.